In designing plans, whether I'm doing it for one of my trailers or a remodel or a complete house, getting the information on paper, dimensioned in notes is very critical. Modeling everything up and getting it right in SketchUp is where it starts, but I need to get it onto paper and communicate to myself in the field and if somebody else is doing it, exactly how to put the thing together and where to cut. So in the model, I make sure that I get it very accurate. And so this is my SketchUp model and these are all my different tabs. I use the dimensioning in SketchUp in the model, like you see here, to get the model just right. I don't use these dimensions for my final product. They get erased. Uh, again, they get me where I need to be and then they get deleted and then I do my dimensioning in layout. Layout is much more powerful dimensioning tool. I need to dual dimension. Now for SketchUp, there is a plugin and plugins are incredibly powerful for SketchUp. There is a plugin from Sketchucation called Dual Dim version 1.6. I don't have it uh, again because it only works in SketchUp. It does not work in layout and I don't need Imperial or I don't need metric in my models because again my dimensioning is temporary and it's just so that I can know that I've got it right and then I do all my notes and, and stuff over in layout and just for to show you why I can't do it if I jump over here to this right view I put this dimension in the model in SketchUp just to show you how they come across so you can see it's kind of pixelated. I can't really control the size here. I can't move it around. It's baked into the model. I would have to go back into the model and move it around and make adjustments to it. And as I'm dimensioning, I'm going very quick and getting it uh, so things lay out and line up uh, just would not work. And you can see how nice and crisp the dimensions are in um, layout. And I can change the font not only the, the, the font itself, but the size of the font. I can change its orientation. I can change how the line weights and how these little cross sections look. So I can change a lot of that. And again, if I want to move this over, both of these over an inch, I can just grab it and move it. But if I come over here, this is part of the model and I, I can't do it. So it's not an option to use the dual dimensioning tool in SketchUp. If, if there were one for layout, and I hope there will be, it certainly will make my life a lot easier but I do have a bit of a workaround so I typically get a drawing all set up and again these are the models this is three different shots of the model and they are connected uh, to SketchUp I can come in here and when I go here I'm actually in SketchUp adjusting things and then I come back out and it's uh, it saves that new view I'm gonna command Z to go back but so I've got this hot connection from layout back into SketchUp but it doesn't work for the dimensioning. Now, the dimensioning tool in SketchUp is incredibly powerful. I can come in here and change all this information on dimensioning styles, the scale of it. So I've got it set to architectural, to inches, to precision of an eighth of an inch. I can go down to a 64th if I choose. And I can also go in and make it imperial, millimeter, and change it to one millimeter precision there, and then it will do everything in, um, in the uh, metric system. So again, I need to see it in Imperial, and I want a little more precision than that. Eighth is good for this. And so now I'm ready to dimension, but there's a lot of options um, where it's uh, where the, the number falls on the line, how the, the line weight, um, all of that kind of stuff. And so if I come in here and I click here and I click here and I bring this up right to where I want it. I come, if you come too far, the line pops. So I get it right to where I want it. And that's the style and the look that I like for long dimensioning, whether it's vertical or horizontal. But I also want to show it in metric. Now I could come back in here and do a second one in metric. I could click there, click there, bring it over. It would lay it right over the top of the eight and then I can adjust it over. And I've done that quite a bit. That was my go-to for a long time, but I spent a lot of time fiddling to get it to lay out just right. And then I have to move some of the numbers over. So instead of that, I do it manually and I'll just 
All I have to do is click on the dimension, it highlights it. I have to get into where the number is, double click into there and it'll turn horizontal if it's on the vertical, if it's already vertical, it'll just open up so that I can type in what I want. Now I could just change this dimension at this time and this is a good way if I can force a number to be exactly what I want. But I'll just put in an open parentheses, 2400 millimeter. Now I know it's actually 2438.4 because I've seen it a bunch, but I know that plywood comes in, they rate it at 2400 millimeters. So I do that and all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, that doesn't look right. It's what happened. Well, it's there. It's just, it, it memorizes its text box uh, size from before. And all you have to do is take your move tool and just move it slightly. It'll actually snap right where it was. So it doesn't even really move. And it just resizes the, um, the text box. And then if I want to do a, a dimension up here, you'll see if I go like this, then all of a sudden it doesn't quite work because I want the numbers to go the other way. So then I have to come in here. I could have preset it up so that, let's click it in place. So I could have preset it up over here, going back and forth, back and forth, depending on what I'm doing. And, uh, and I will do that. I will set up and do all the long ones. And then when I get to these really narrow ones where I use a leader, uh, I've got different styles. And again, I've got all this flexibility. But, but I'll come in here and then I'll just click on that and then come over and change the orientation. And then again, I'll come in and, and do my conversion. And because I don't know the metric on a lot of things, uh, I will use my handy dandy construction calculator, which used to be an expensive calculator I carried separate, but now it's on my iPhone. And I will just simply type in whatever it is. It's one foot eight inches and just hit metric conversion and it's 508. So I will come in here and I will put an open parenthesis and I will go 508 and I'll put mm to indicate it's millimeters. Close. And again, I'll just have to almost act like I'm going to move in this. It'll just snap right where it was. And then I have that dimension style. And then I'll have other, many other styles that I'll want as well. For example, when I've got a narrow one like this and I want to show that this is three quarters, I'll come in and set it up how I want it. I will, in this case, I want to have it away from there because that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I will uh, grab the, the number itself. And the way I do that is I click on it twice and then I get the move tool and then I can move it. And so that moves it off to the side. And then I want to have a leader. It says no leader so I can change it to any one of these leaders here. Or I can just right click on the number and say I like a two segment leader. And so then I can move it around until it looks how I want it to look. Now, of course, I know I need to have the metric on here. So I'm going to type in 19 millimeters. And then again, I'm going to move it just a little bit. And now that it's full size, I can grab it and move it around until it makes sense and works with the other, you know, with the rest of the design. So I can move it around and, and adjust it just how I want it. So that's fine and dandy and that's, you know, not too bad, but you can imagine if you look at uh, one of my other pages, how many dimensions I have. And if I'm going in and doing a dimension and changing every single one, you can see that that would be very time consuming. But layout has a handy little tool. It's this eyedropper up here. If I click on this eyedropper, in fact, I'll show you how it works. I'm going to go here and click on that one. See the little bucket. It's memorized everything about that dimension. Now, not the millimeters that was put in manually. I've got to do that on every single one. So I can come in now and I've clicked on the wrong one just to show you what happens. So you can see it has used all of the style information from this type of dimension and it's used it up here and that's not what I want. Actually, I know that I want to have one that looks more like this or more like this depending on um, how it's going to work out. And this one might be, it'll be a little too long. So I'm going to click on this one, see the little bucket and then click on the dimension and then come in here 
and pull it up right to where I want it. And now I just go in and do my millimeter conversion. And so now if I want to do a long one down here, I will just, again, click on this tool, click the eyedropper, click right there, I get the little bucket. And now I know that all of everything I've done, all the customization is memorized just with that one little click. Now what I do to speed this up is I go through and I'll do all the ones that are long, you know, horizontals first, and then I'll do the wider, or, or so the long verticals first, and then I'll do the wider horizontals, and then I'll work my way down to the narrow horizontals and the narrow verticals just by clicking on each one. And because my plans are multiple pages, in this case, I'm at page 16 and I've got another 20 pages to go. Um, I don't need to recreate these styles on each page. I can actually take my eyedropper and I can go to a previous page and click on that dimension style and then when I start my new page I've already got it so I can bring them over without recreating them. So I'm telling you how to do it and explaining it uh, takes a lot longer than doing it. I can dimension this entire page uh, in about uh, with with the manually putting in the millimeters I can dimension this this page here in under five minutes and I could probably do it in a minute or less if SketchUp engineers would just give us a checkbox that says display dimensions in and give you a choice of imperial metric you know where you can do two and then also how refined you want them to be. So if you're doing a metric, you want to round to, you know, one millimeter. And if you're in uh, Imperial, you want to round to a 16th or an eighth or 32nd, how, whatever kind of precision you need. So if you could just a couple of, they've already got it all there. It all works, it just works in two separate operations. Just combine those so that it will give us something like that. So that's how I do dual dimensioning. It's critical in what I do. Almost 80% of the design work I do, I have to dual dimension now. So this is, this is how I found that I can do it as efficiently as possible, at least with the tools that are available today. Well, hopefully this little SketchUp layout tip will help you. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.